I've been using macOS 10 Yosemite's beta for developers for a few hours now, and just after reopening QuickTime Player after it had crashed on me, I have a good idea of why it's still in uh, developer preview stage. Um, first off, I installed this on a partition on my MacBook Pro, so it's not I'm not, not using it as my main OS, I'm just trialing it out to see how it goes and see how apps work with it. I'll do post a video on how to install it on a partition in the coming weeks, but it's pretty straightforward. So first off, the, my main my first impression of Yosemite was wow, the interface looks nice. I personally like the look of uh, iOS seven. So if I open up a Finder window here, you can see um, firsthand what it looks like on your own kind of wallpaper and how it changes color there next to the sidebar. See the look at the sidebar and see how it's changing color as I move the window around. If you've watched any of Apple's demos, you've seen it in action. But it really is something when you look at it for yourself. It reminds me somewhat of Windows Aero um, back with Windows 7, how it had the transparency between the windows. If I open up a few more Finder windows and open up Mission Control, Mission, yeah, Mission Control, you can see it's still it's still here. It still looks a bit different though. You no longer have the uh, blackish bar up the top here, and it's now transparent and looks quite nice. I do have to note it still is in developer preview, and that is evident throughout the OS. Some things such as folders, if you notice here, they don't show up like at all there is nothing there that's possibly because they haven't completed the icons for downloads documents and things like that but who knows um, other bugs include starting up when I first started up or when I first did a Google search on Yosemite problems to make sure that there weren't any major ones that would destroy my hardware I came across a startup issue so if you go to system preferences after installing Yosemite on a partition you will have to go to startup disk and reselect Mavericks if you want to still run Mavericks. So you have to start up um, from Mavericks as such, but then you just hold the option key after you hear the chime, and then you can select Yosemite. If you just boot with Yosemite, you won't have the option to return back to Mavericks. You have to either go into the, uh, the partition for recovery, so that's by holding Command and R as you boot. Um, you'll be able to then click the Apple logo and click on Startup Repair, um, Startup Disk, and select Mavericks from there. Um, back to the user interface side of things. The font, Helvetica Neon, or Hel Helvetica, it's basically Helvetica. It looks nice. I've always been a huge fan of Helvetica, and I like the way it looks but I'm not quite sure yet of how it will go for a system-wide user interface font. In terms of being able to read it nice, it's okay, but I prefer it for nice big banners or my name or my um, my desktop background here. That's in Helvetica. And it looks quite nice there because it's nice and big. However, I'm on a MacBook Pro now, but if I put this onto a TV, I'll be interested to see how the text of the menu items look on a 42-inch uh, 720p TV. Um, 1080p it would look okay, but it's still not as crisp as what you'd like. 4K it would look great, but I'm just going to be interested to see how that looks once I get the time to find that out. Other things that aren't changed yet are iTunes. Um, Dashboard is still here, but it's turned off by default. To turn Dashboard on, if you still want to use Dashboard, you can go on to Search on System Preferences and type in Dashboard. And you can select to turn it on there. However, once you start getting used to Notification Center here and begin to use that, you'll find most of the features are already there or they've transitioned over into Spotlight. Spotlight is been updated. If you've ever used Alfred, the, the app, go Google it or go look on the App Store for it. You'll feel right at home because it's the same kind of user interface. Spotlight, you'll notice it's now front and center. Let's get rid of some of these windows here. It's now front and center. Nice, clean, transparent. And if we type in uh, Apple, 
you can it gives us dictionary definitions it searches the web things like that all searches finder searches everything really and it brings it up in a nice easy to use way instead of having it at the top there i quite prefer this method as i use alfred quite often for opening apps and searching things on the web something else that's now changed is reminders i personally use todoist but reminders just has a nice user interface for it um, again with the the nice translucency there I just like that I don't know there's something about it that I like it makes it seem really modern and really nice along with the Helvetica text um, along with the colors of my background but let's have a look and see what it looks like on a different background um, Apple always touted that by changing your desktop background you change the whole theme the whole feel of the OS so let's have a look at the default wallpaper and it still looks quite nice um, on lighter colors I guess it has a different effect on darker colors it has a different effect um, launchpad looks like this now and if we go into the folder notice notice there the icons aren't actually showing in the utilities folder but when you open it up it looks like that um, much like iOS 7 Chrome uh, the things that I've tried are Chrome and Spotify they both work perfectly fine um, Pages I haven't tried yet because I actually haven't bought Pages. Pages came on this Mac, but I will try Pages. I, I might. Uh, I'll just. I won't try Pages because I don't want to pay thirty more dollars for Pages. But that's that. Notification Center. It's still not smooth. Like that transition there. It won't come across on video, but it just isn't as smooth as what I want it to be. Um, scrolling sometimes gets a bit jittery. And the other issue was the startup issue there. That's mainly the only issues I've had so far. Once I install Adobe Premiere, I'll let you know how that goes. Same with Photoshop. I'll let you know, definitely know how that goes, but I'm sure Adobe will have lots of updates to bring Photoshop up into its day and age to run on uh, Yosemite. The dock, again, the new finder icon. I don't mind it. Um, I really quite like... I'm liking Yosemite. I really am. Uh, calendar has been changed again. Contacts is a little bit different. But most apps are fairly similar. I haven't been able to try out Continuity yet because it isn't fully turned on in this developer preview. This is only the first developer preview. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'll start turning on more features once they get around to it. But as for the user, user interface side of things, I like where this is going. So stay tuned for more Mac OS X Yosemite videos. I'll let you know if I have any more problems or if I find anything else that's really quite cool that I want to share with you guys. So thanks again for watching. Um, if you have any requests on what you want to be shown from Mac OS X Yosemite, again, the volume, but things are the same. I, sorry, that was random. But you can request a video by commenting down below and I'll see if I can do it. If it's a paid application, uh, you're welcome to donate, and I'll buy the application and I'll try it out. If you have a spare Mac, I do strongly recommend you trying Yosemite for yourself. That way you get a first hands-on experience of what it's like to use Yosemite. Thanks again for watching. I hope you had a nice day, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe.